Saving the Ship of State, with the Viable System Model. Conference by Javier Levis, in the City of Puebla, May 2, 2012. The Titanic sank on the 14th and 15th of April of 1912. The direct cause of the sinking, was it hit an iceberg. But if you look at the whole picture of causation, there was a combination of factors. The captain ordered it to go too fast, and the reaction time was reduced. The iceberg was seen when it was too late. Factor in, to the loss of control equation, the desire of the owner to get to New York in record time. So trying to satisfy the press, in order to please the public was another factor. The world of systems is full of these remote connections. For instance, chaos theory has popularized the butterfly effect, where the flapping of the wings of a butterfly in Brazil, can create, if the conditions are right, a storm in New York. If we look at the organization of the Titanic tragedy, we can see that the captain is at the top of the authority pyramid, that commands both the crew, and the passengers. However, on top of him is the owner, who sits at the bottom of an inverted pyramid, where the press, and finally the public, put pressure on him to race to New York. The rest is history. I begin this presentation, recalling the history of the Titanic, because the Greeks Plato and Aristotle, had a special name for the pilot of a ship. In Latin it became Kubernetes, from which the word governor was born. Norbert Wiener, the famous boy genius mathematician from MIT, chose Kubernetes, to create the word cybernetics, as the title of the book where this area of knowledge began, in 1947. Arturo Rosenblewith, a friend of Wiener, was a key factor in convincing him and other scientists, that a new science was in the making, based on the idea that information feedback was present in many different ways, especially in anything with a purpose. He had studied homeostatic balances in the body and could see it happening in all sorts of different machines and situations. Cybernetics has become a different way of looking at the world. One has become a paradigm in its own right. It therefore engulfs traditional science, as it deals in principle, with any observer in the acquisition of knowledge. 2. As a formal science, as presented by W. Ross Ashby, it stands on the same ground as mathematics, logic, geometry and other abstract sciences, and gives support to all computer-based sciences. 3. Given Ashby's definition of machine, cybernetics covers anything under the sun, that shows some sort of behavior, except other formal sciences. Within the vast area covered by cybernetics is management cybernetics. This is what this video is about. Shown here is Stafford Beer, the father of management cybernetics. The world has changed a lot in the past 65 years, since cybernetics was born. We have computers, information satellites, and internet. A GPS tells us our location on Earth exactly. It feels like magic but it is really the accumulation of knowledge, which itself has speeded up by cybernetics. However, the technology for organizing government, has not changed that much. We still follow a design that originated with the Greek philosophers, that was adopted by the British and was later copied by the founding fathers of the United States of America. I am talking about the system of democracy, also adopted in Mexico. We have a Congress, supposedly representing the people. The government structure, is again something, that looks like two pyramids, facing each other at the top. A president, is the linking pin of both. In theory, the structure begins at the top, with the citizens acting as sovereign, then the political parties, the electoral system, electoral authorities, and the federal Congress. From there, the president has his administration, and then the same people acting as the controlled population. This pyramid, representing the federal administration, generates the illusion of power. Hierarchical structures generate a lot of control problems. 
This is why I call this an illusory control scheme. This has been the base for the Mexican political system, with a powerful president and a weak Congress and now it is totally dysfunctional. Given that the parts look a lot like the whole, political parties also have pyramid structures. In Mexico, they are happy to share the monopoly on the registration of candidates to public office. There is no chance to register an independent. Now, please remember, what I just said about the system, that sank the Titanic. I must point out that the Titanic, was a steam ship. Communications between the captain, and the crew in charge, was a simple tubing. Blowing into the tube, produced a sound that grabbed attention. The sound waves of the voices, traveled back and forth through the tube. For external communications, a single radio telegraph operator, was unable to make contact with the ship Californian, which was only 10 miles away. Cybernetics has shown that control is dependent on communications. Without good communication, control is impossible. Sean Turnbull has studied this control problem in hierarchical organizations, and comes to the conclusion, that communications failures are a big problem, and can be measured. The chart above, reproduces his findings. The best way, to prevent huge information loss, is to design systems, using the same communication structure, as found in the human nervous system. This, we know how to do, thanks to the late Professor Stafford Beer, shown here with his viable system model. Instead of loading the structure, with lots of different communication levels, between the citizens as sovereign and as subjects, the new governance would reorganize the country in such way, so that productive activities would be grouped by the specialty or industrial or commercial sector. Citizens with specialized knowledge, would be managers in these semi-private sectors. They would be in charge of setting policies, and some overall planning. The rest of the work, would be done by private corporations competing in conditions of fairness. In this way, each economic sector would have its own congress or ruling body. And all the resulting congresses, or management boards, would have representation at a larger table, where these sectors would work out their own coordination or differences. A better solution, would be to apply the viable system model, that Professor Beer has created. It has already solved, every detail of the organization, by following the way nature has organized, after millions of years of evolution. All living things, and viable systems with a capability for independent existence, show the same structure, at different organization levels. It is, a recursive structure. The best example, is the structure of the human nervous system. A big advantage of using Stafford Beer's language, is that it describes both private and public organizations with the same model. They are similar structures, inside a larger one, which is the whole country. Stafford Beer acquired international fame, when he helped the government of President Allende in Chile 1973, establish a management system, for the social sector of the economy, using this cybernetic structure. As you know, Ajen Day was the victim of a coup d'état and the Cybersyn project was shut down and forgotten. This is now a famous photography of the operations room, designed for making high-level decisions in the government. Today, 40 years later, and thanks to super-fast computers, access to internet, and much improved software packages, it is now possible to create a cybernetic management system it would be much easier to emulate the organization of the human body, making it more efficient. This is known as a real-time control government system, with information which is automatically generated by the organization, in order to feed the decision makers. Some corporations in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, have begun applying these real-time control methods, which give them a huge competitive advantage. The experts who are in waiting, hoping to be called to come and save a country are the following. Fredman Malik, from Malik Management Centrum in Switzerland, shown here with some of his books. Raul Espejo, who was part of the Cybersyn project in Chile. Barry Clemson, an American, 
and also a friend of Stafford Beer. Shown here with his book. Patrick Huberstadt, author of the book The Fractal Organization, based on the viable system model. Marcus Schwaninger, also from Switzerland. He uses the viable system model to describe intelligent organizations. Angela Espinosa, a former student of Stafford Beer, and John Walker who studied the Mondragon Cooperative in Spain, are the authors of a complexity approach to sustainability. Luke Hobick is a consultant on these matters, with his book on making work systems better. All the above are disciples and friends of Stafford Beer, who died in August of 2002. There is much more viable system material in my YouTube channel, including some of Stafford Beer's conferences.